Welcome back to our church family. We're in the sixth chapter of 2 Kings. Let's go there now. The company of prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there for us to live. He said, Go. Then one of them says, Won't you please come with your servant? I will, Elisha replied. And he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down the tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh, my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. The man of God says, where did it fall? He showed him the place. Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it out, he says. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. May God add a blessing to the hearer, reader, and doer of his holy word. And I want to use for a subject as we break the bread of life today, I want my cutting edge back. I want my cutting edge back. Serving the Lord, filled with the spirit of God, is where our joy is full and overflows. It's rewarding. It's awesome. It's adventurous. Yet there comes a time in every Christian's life where we lose our cutting edge. And mind you, I'm not talking about the broken theology of lost salvation because some faith traditions believe that salvation can be lost. But we believe that salvation is not ours to earn. It is the gift of God. And once it is received, that there is no losing it. For it says in the book of Romans that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Jesus further reassures us in the gospel of John, where he says in John 10 and 28, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one shall snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. So what I'm saying to the saved Christians is there are times when we are serving and giving and walking with the Lord and something happens. We find ourselves not feeling as connected to God as we once felt. We find ourselves just going through the motions of ministry. We find that our prayer life is slacking and lacking power. We find ourselves not as effective in ministry as we once were. What I'm trying to say is that even the best of God's servants at some point in time lose their cutting edge. Now, I'm going to tell you something this morning that may shock you. You may be taken aback, but if you allow me to be real for a moment, at some point, we may lose our cutting edge, and that's all right. Don't beat yourself up. Don't hide it. Don't try avoidance. Don't get depressed. Don't start to doubt if you're still saved. Don't let the enemy use this time to stomp on you. Sometimes we say to ourselves, am I saved? Because right now I don't feel the gift of salvation. I don't feel the victory of salvation. I once did, but I don't now. I want to give some reassurance this morning to say that you are in a place where champions of God have found themselves. Just a few weeks ago, we saw God's man, Elijah, battling with depression and just wanted the Lord to take his life. We look at Adam and Moses, David, and Abraham, Peter, and Paul. Throughout scripture, we find some of the champions of God we read about losing their cutting edge. And don't just think because they are in scripture and we read about their story that God is not able to use us like he used them. Don't just think because you may be in a place where your cutting edge is gone that you are somehow different than others. The difference between some of us and God's biblical champions is that they chose not to stay in that place. They chose not to stay in the spiritual disposition of the loss of a cutting edge in the valley of disconnection from God. Their resolve was that God did not save me, protect me, call me and deliver me to remain in that state. 
And I say to you, child of God, God did not give us his son, Jesus, to die for our sins, to be disconnected to him, to just go through the motions of ministry. He didn't give us Jesus to have a dull existence. We were created to make his service spectacular. We were created to make his worship wonderful. We were created to make his praise glorious. So where are you this morning? It's okay. It's all right. Don't run from it. You have been brought here today to get it back. You're listening today to get it back. But you have to realize it. You have to understand it. But you have tuned in this morning to come to the revelation that I can't stay here. I just can't stay in this dull, disconnected, and detached relationship with God. We are our brothers and sisters keeper. It is time for iron to sharpen iron as we look to regain our cutting edge. So today we must shout with a loud shout. I want it back. I want my cutting edge back. This sermon today is going to be another one of conviction, self-introspection. It's going to be an exposing word in that we may see our true selves and as a result, desire a better, more connected existence in our relationship with God and with each other. Our cutting edge for our time here today represents the power of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives, the power to witness, to serve, to give, the power of God to work, to worship, to praise, that power of God that gives us the ability to be more than conquerors, that power of God that gives us the ability to be bold in the midst of storms, to stand on the promises of God and claim them as our own, the power of God that allows us to go boldly before the throne of God and say, as your child, you said you would provide for me. Never leave me nor forsake me. God, I need you right now. So on our way to getting our cutting edge back, when we lose our cutting edge, the first thing we have to do is admit we've lost it. When the young prophet knew the ax head was gone, he didn't try to dive in after it. He didn't try to act like it was still there, but wasn't. He didn't try to make do with what he had left. He lost the ax head. And his next words were, oh Lord, oh Lord. There is no cutting down of trees without an ax head. He knew his work would suffer without it. It would not only be slow, but it would be impossible. We can really be some prideful people at times. We want to be able to pull our own weight. We don't want to depend upon anyone. And I don't want anyone to hold anything over my head saying, see, it's because of me that you were able to do this, that, and the other. And I get it. I really do. But we allow this thought process and mindset to transfer into our relationship with God. And it becomes very problematic because God did not create us to be in an independent relationship with him. He seeks to be our God, no matter the power, the provision, the security or address you may dwell on this earth. Too often we seek to do everything on our own. Weather the storm, fight the enemy alone. And for what? Do we think God is impressed if we make it through the storm or situation and turn and say, see, God, I didn't need you at all. I did it all on my own. And hey, I know it's hard to admit when we need help. It's hard at times to humble ourselves before the Lord. But I want to ask a question. Why are we punishing God for what the world has done to us. Why are we punishing God for what the world has done to us? You know, like the baggage that we bring into a new relationship and this new person didn't have anything to do with our past hurt, but they have to pay the price for it. And that is the way it's been at times because let's face it, we have opened ourselves up to receive help from others and they've taken advantage of our need disposition 
and they become the emotional payday loan establishment. And they hold that over our head and we can never live it down. We can never be even. It's always, well, remember when I gave you that money, remember when I helped you out, and they are worse than the lending institution because at least at the lending institution, they can take the car or the house or some tangible object and it'd be over. But these people, these emotional blackmailers just exist to make our lives hell just because they can. And because of these bad experiences, we have become insulated and never admit that we need help. And when genuine help shows up, we reject it because of the past emotional loan sharks, the emotional pimps in our life. And even when God seeks to help, not on purpose, but subconsciously, we respond with our actions and say, no, thank you, God, because I don't want you to hold that over my head. But church, if we want our cutting edge back, if we want to get to where God is leading us and guiding us and taking us, realize it is not meant for us to get there alone. Just as God says to Adam, it is not good for man to be alone. He is saying to you, not alone, but in community is how you will get through this situation because there are some situations we will not be able to get through alone. This is why God brought you here to Third Church or even here in service today. When we realize we need one another to survive and to thrive, everything changes for the better in how we talk, walk, interact, how we work together, worship together, praise God together, because I know you got my back and I have yours. So church, let the fronts in today. If we lost it, admit it and declare, I want my cutting edge back. And after we admit the loss, it's time for self-examination. It's time for a serious self-assessment. This is where I am. This is where I need to be. And I make a plan to get there. And too often we're living in a pseudo comfort zone and thinking that we're further alone than we actually are. Or I see some saints that have been serving for a while and they feel like they're on religious cruise control or something. They think they have served so long that they don't need to study or pray or serve anymore. That somehow that they put in their time and they don't need to grow anymore. And if this is you, you have lost your cutting edge. Or get this one, we use the excuse, God is still working on me. So in my mind, I don't have to change. I don't have to move toward change. I'm just waiting to be called on my shenanigans and pull out of my get out of conviction free card that God ain't done with me yet. God is still working on me. Let me get this right. So it's God's fault that you're not further along on this journey. We're like the spouse in the marriage that blames everything on their partner, but will not accept any responsibility for the brokenness of the relationship. Church, we do an examination not only to see where we are, but to see where we need to be and how to get there. We talked in previous sermons about being passionate for Jesus. And if we want our cutting edge back, we have to be passionate about growing spiritually. So church, if we want it back, if we want our cutting edge back, we must further realize the power of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives is borrowed. The power of the Holy Spirit in our lives is borrowed. The young prophet in our account, after the ax head fell, exclaimed, it was borrowed. Everything we have, including ourselves, is borrowed. We don't own anything. We are stewards, not owners. When we think we own something, we tend at times to take it for granted. We ignore it. It will be there when I get around to it. However, we must realize that we will have to give account as to how we've been submissive to the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. We don't own God's spirit. God has given us his spirit because he loves us. He wants to grow us, prepare us, sanctify us, to lead us, guide us, convict us, to empower us, to do all the things that God has ordained 
for us to do in this life. The power of God's spirit is borrowed. And it is by that cutting edge power that situations and circumstances, even storms in our lives are cut through and cut down. You see, our task metaphorically is to go through this life cutting down trees, so to speak. Then the power to do our job is in the ax head. It's in the cutting edge. All we have is the handle. And God wants us to be handle swingers with the power of the Holy Spirit, our cutting edge, to be able to do the work, forged through the force called life, trailblazing a path that is not made possible in our own power. So when issues come up in life, we know we have our cutting edge. We know we have the power of God on our side. We will just start swinging in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cut down that financial situation. I cut down that situation of injustice. I just start swinging and cut down that sickness. And in every situation in my life, all I've been called to do is swing the handle and let the Holy Spirit cut through and clear my path. And when I have my cutting edge, I know that no weapon formed against me will prosper. I know that I am more than a conqueror with my cutting edge. I know if God brought me to it, then the Holy Spirit will cut me through it. In regaining our cutting edge, we admit we lost it. We realize it's borrowed. And if we want it back, we must return to the place where we lost it. Notice in this account, the young prophet knew where and when he lost the power to do what he was called to do and purpose to do. He knew the exact moment he lost his ability to perform his task effectively. It was not like he kept swinging for an hour and realized, you know, this tree is not falling and I'm not making any headway. Listen, church, it is not a mystery to us. We know just where it happened. We know when it happened. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say my life was so much more peaceful and joyous when I was coming to church. I had fulfillment in my life when I was serving in the ministry. I had money to spare when I was faithfully tithing. Now it seems like the more money I have, the less money I have. Well, yes, it does not take a genius to understand life serving God is better than life serving the world. So if we want to regain our cutting edge, it means returning to the place where we lost it. That may mean returning to regular church attendance. It may mean making Bible study a lifestyle. It may mean returning to active service in ministry where you are called and gifted. It may mean letting go of a grudge and reconciling a relationship. It may mean a lot of things, but where we lost our cutting edge is not a mystery to us. We know the time, the place and the space where it happened, we must be humble enough to return to that place. Why? Because hitting a tree with an ax handle does nothing but hurt our hands. And many of us are walking through life hurting because we're hitting trees with no cutting edge, no power of the spirit of God, and it is painful. And this pain will not be cured by a drink, smoke, peel, vacation. It will not be cured by burying ourselves in work, gaining some kind of status in the world, buying a car or a house. It will not be cured by ignoring that we're in pain. It will only be eased by regaining our cutting edge. And that is the power of the spirit of God. So in regaining our cutting edge, we admit we lost it. We acknowledge it's borrowed. We go back to the place where we lost it. Then we must be willing to trust God's divine power for its recovery. Back to the pride thing. We want to show God we found it, but we can't recover something that is God's to give. And too often we lose our cutting edge and we look like a drowning person in a river. All we're doing is splashing and making a lot of noise, but we really have no hope of finding our cutting edge on our own. This is what it looks like when we use the Bible as a medicine cabinet and not use it as oxygen. We want to cherry pick scriptures when something is going on in our life in hopes that it will make it better. We even do things like call the pastor and say, well, what, what's this scripture for? 
this situation or that situation, and that's fine to do. But let me tell you, you don't need a particular scripture. You need a saving relationship with Jesus. You see, scripture is given to us to reinforce our relationship with God, not to take the place of our relationship with God. And when we are cherry picking scriptures, we're looking for scripture to be our savior and not yield to the one and only savior. King David realized this when he lost his cutting edge in his escapades with Bathsheba. When he came to himself, he penned Psalms 51, where he says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee and thee only have I sinned and done evil in thy sight. But Lord, wash me, cleanse me, purge me, create in me a clean heart. O God, renew a right spirit within me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. David says, God, I want it back. I want my relationship restored. David says, I have lost my cutting edge. I have lost my way. I have lost my connectedness. And God, you and you alone are the only one who can restore it to me. And church, this was my revelation that I needed the Holy Spirit of God to make everything in my life make sense. I don't know who I am apart from you, God. God, I don't know where I am going without your direction. I can't feel without you. My life is just numb and dull. And I know Jesus died so that I will have life and have it abundantly. I need that. I desire that. Bring my cutting edge to the surface, O oh Lord. I want it back. I need it back. I want to fall back in love with you all over again. And I'm going to tell you, child of God, that the God I serve will respond. He's going to do it. He will present himself to you. He will perform the miracle in your life. He will make the ax head in your life float. But when he does it, we must lastly respond to the miracle. When God has restored your cutting edge, when your relationship with God has been restored, then faith requires works. Notice that the young prophet was just looking at the axe head floating. But Elisha says, reach out and pick it up. God is not working miracles in your life so that we can just sit around and be in awe. No, God is working miracles in our lives to strengthen our faith in him and that we will be of greater service to him. So we can't just watch and stare at the cutting edge floating. We have to pick it up and start swinging again. Start cutting through situations in life again. Start showing the world that the power of our cutting edge, when we see the tree of death of a loved one, then we cut it down. When we see the tree of loss of job shows up, we cut it down. When the tree of sickness shows up, cut it down by the power of God, we start swinging. When our cutting edge is restored, we start serving again, praying again, start studying and working and worshiping and witnessing and loving and forgiving and meeting the needs and protecting one another as we realize we are not just building this ministry, but we are co-laborers in building the kingdom of God. We're not just going through the motions of ministry and all of our efforts are in vain without the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we must individually and collectively come to the point where we exclaim, I want it back. Just like the young prophet says when he lost the ax head, I want my cutting power back. So church, I want it back. 
I want everything that I let slip away from me back. I want everything that I underestimated and thought I could do without, I want it back. I want my passion back. I want my fire back. I want my burden back. I want my freedom and liberty and my joy back. I want my power back. I want the supernatural back. I want the desire for prayer back in my life. I want the glory of God back in my life. Something has been missing and now I know what it is and I refuse to carry on without it. And I pray you feel the same way. So today, let us shout, I want my cutting edge back. I want to thank you for tuning in today. Next week, we're going to continue our study of Second Kings with a sermon titled, In Spite of Failure. I pray that you join us as we continue to grow spiritually with our study of the word of God. Until then, remember, be patient, be kind, be compassionate with everyone you come in contact with. Remember this week, if God brought me to it, the Holy Spirit will cut me through it. God bless you and God keep you. And we're going to see you next week.